Greetings, everyone. Welcome to ENE Learning Hub, where I'm going to go through and explain the solutions for questions related to transformers. All right, so let's begin. So this is question six from the 2004 past paper. Part A, it says, list the three key components of a transformer. The three key components of a transformer are, one, the primary winding, two, secondary winding, and three, the transformer core. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says, name three losses present in a poor transformer on load. So the three losses are copper loss, hysteresis loss, and eddy current loss. All right, so that's it for part B. For part C, it says, make a neat sketch of one type of transformer construction. All right, so here I have the diagram for the core type transformer construction. So for the core type transformer, the coil is wrapped around the core and that's how you can differentiate between the shell type transformer. For the shell type, the core is actually around the windings of the transformer. All right, so that's the difference between the core type and the shell type transformer. All right, so that's it for part C, and that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So that is question two from the 2008 past paper question. It says, name two electromotive forces that are induced in the conductors of a double wound power transformer. All right, so the two electromotive forces are self-inductance and mutual inductance. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says a step-down transformer with an input of 230 volts gives an output of 24 volts. The transformer has 800 turns of primary windings. Calculate the number of turns on the secondary windings. All right, so the number of secondary turns is equal to, in bracket, the number of primary turns multiplied by the secondary voltage divided by the primary voltage that will give us 800 times 24 volts divided by 230 volt. That will give us 83 turns. All right, so that's it for part B. For part C, it says, what are the two main losses present in an iron core transformer under load conditions? So the two main losses are hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. All right, so that's it for part C. For part D, it says, a high voltage transmission line causes electrical energy from location A to be used at location B. What type of transformers are required at the two locations? So at location A, a step up transformer is needed to step up the voltage to transmit it to location B. At location B, you're going to need a step down transformer now to step down that voltage to 110, 220 volt, or whatever the desired voltage is that is needed. All right, so that's it for part D. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So that's question one from the 2010 past paper. Part A, it says, name two types of EMF that are induced in a double wound transformer. So the two types are self-inductance and mutual inductance. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says, name two sources of energy losses in a double wound transformer. So the two sources of energy losses are copper loss and iron loss. All right, so that's it for part B. For part one of C, it says, state Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So Michael Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that an EMF is induced in a coil when relative motion exists between a conductor and a magnetic field. And the magnitude of the EMF is proportional to the rate of change of the flux. All right, so that's it for part one of C. For part two of C, it says state lenses law. 
So Lenz's law states that the direction of an induced EMF is such that it will always opposes the change that is created. All right, so that's it for part 12C, and that's it for part C, and that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So that's question three from the 2011 past paper. Part A, it says with the aid of simple diagrams, describe the main difference between a double wound step up transformer and an auto transformer. All right, so here is the diagram for the double wound transformer. So looking at the transformer, we can see that there is no electrical connection between the primary side of the transformer and the secondary side of the transformer. All right, so electrical energy is transferred from the primary side to the secondary side magnetically. All right, so that's it for the double wound transformer. For the auto transformer now, as you can see, it's one coil. So the fact that it is one coil, it means that electrical power is transferred from the primary to the secondary by means of magnetism and also electrical connection. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says a single phase double wound transformer has 200 primary turns and 50 secondary turns. What will be the secondary voltage and the secondary current if the transformer has an AC input of 120 volts at one amp. All right, so secondary voltage is equal to primary voltage multiplied by the secondary turns divided by the primary turns. That will give us 120 volt times 50 divided by 200, and that will give us 30 volt for the secondary voltage. For the secondary current, IS is equal to number of primary turns multiplied by the primary current divided by the number of secondary turns. So that is 200 multiplied by one divided by 50. That will give us four ampere. All right, so that's it for that question. Now let's move on to the next question. So this is question two from the 2009 past paper question. Part right, A. It says, name two factors which impact on the inductance of an inductor. So the two factors are the core of the material and the number of turns. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says, figure two shows the schematic diagram of a step-up transformer. So here is figure two, the schematic of the step-up transformer. All right, so let's continue. It says, the ratio of the primary to secondary windings is one to two. Assume that the transformer is 100% efficient. Calculate part one, secondary voltage. So Vs is equal to number of secondary turns multiplied by the primary voltage divided by the number of primary turns. So that is two multiplied by 10 volts divided by one, and that will give us 20 volt as the secondary voltage. All right, so that's it for part one. For part two, the primary current. So IS equals I, which is equal to voltage divided by resistance. That will give us 20 volt divided by 10 ohm, and we'll end up with two amp. All right, so the first thing that we did here was to calculate the secondary current first. And the reason why we use these values is because we were given the value for the load resistor and we calculated the secondary voltage across the load resistor, which is 20 volt. So we can use those two values and calculate the secondary current, which is what we did here. So once we have the secondary current, we can now calculate the primary current where the primary current IP is equal to VS multiplied by IS divided by VP, and that is 20 volts multiplied by two amp divided by 10 volts, and that will give us 40 watt divided by 10 volts equal to four ampere. All right, so that's it for part two of B.
for part C, it says, state one reason why transformer cores are laminated. One of the reasons why transformer cores are laminated is to reduce the current loss in the core of the transformer. All right, so that's it for part C, and that's it for that question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So question three from the 2013 past paper. Part A, it says list two types of each of the following. Part one, single phase transformers. All right, so two types of single phase transformers are distribution transformer and auto transformer. All right, so that's it for part one of A. For part two, it says list two types of laminated core types used to construct transformers. So the two core types that are used to construct transformers are one, you have the E core, and the two, you have the U core. All right. So that's it for part two of A. Part B, it says a step down poor transformer with iron losses of 55 watts and copper losses of 20 watt supplies a full load current of 10 amp to a resistive load from a secondary voltage of 100 volt. Part one of B, it says calculate the total pole loss in the transformer. So total pole loss is equal to copper loss plus iron loss. That is 20 watt plus 55 watt will give us 75 watt. All right, so that's it for part one of B. For part two of B, it says to calculate the transformer efficiency at full load. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the output power. So output power is equal to the current times voltage, and that is 10 amp multiplied by 100 volt, and that will give you 1000 watt. The next thing is to calculate the input power. So input power is equal to output power plus total losses. So that is 1000 watt plus 75 watt, and that will give us 1075 watt. All right, so once you have that value, we can now go ahead and calculate the efficiency. So efficiency is equal to input power minus losses divided by input power multiplied by 100. So that is 1075 minus 75 divided by 1075 multiply by 100, and that will give us 93%. So this transformer is 93% efficient. All right, so that's it for part two of B, and that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So this is question four from the 2015 past paper. It says, figure five shows a schematic drawing of a 110 volt 12 volt step down power transformer with 2400 turns in the primary winding supplying a 12 watt to a load resistor part a it says assuming that there are no losses in the transformer calculate part one the number of turns in the secondary windings all right so the number of turns in the secondary windings is equal to the number of primary turns multiplied by the secondary voltage divided by the primary voltage. And that is 2,400 multiplied by 12 divided by 120. And that will give us 240 turns. So that's it for part one of A. For part two, it says calculate the current flowing in the primary windings. So the first thing that we'll have to do is to calculate the secondary current. And we can use the power formula to get the secondary current because power is equal to I times V. All right, so we can transpose this formula to make I the subject. So therefore, I is equal to P divided by V. All right, so from that, we can calculate the secondary current so therefore 12 watt divided by 12 volt will give us one ampere so that's the secondary current so now we can calculate the primary current through the primary winding so ip is equal to 
IS multiplied by VS divided by VP. That will give us one amp multiplied by 12 divided by 120 volts. That will give us 0 0.1 ampere. All right, so that's it for part two of A. All right, so let me clear up the screen here. So let's move on to part B. It says, name two sources of energy losses in a power transformer. So the two sources of energy losses are copper loss and core loss. All right, so that's it for part B. For part C, it says, state the relationship between the two energy losses in the transformer named in B above and the transformer's load current. All right, so the relationship between the core loss and the copper loss in a transformer and the transformer load current is such that at no load conditions, core losses are dominant. At low load conditions, copper losses are dominant. And at high load conditions, both copper losses and core losses contribute significantly to the total energy losses in the transformer. All right, so that's it for part C, and that's it for that question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. All right, so part A, it says, name two substances used to minimize the effect of heat in a transformer. So the two substances are oil and water. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says, figure three shows a double wound transformer with 1,200 turns on the primary winding. Calculate the number of turns on the part one, 400 volt secondary winding. So the number of turns on the secondary winding is equal to NP times VS divided by VP, that is 1,200 multiplied by 400 volt divided by 120 volt, that will give us 480,000 divided by 120, that will give us 4,000 turns on the secondary winding. All right, so that's it for part one. For part two, it says to calculate the number of turns on the 24 volt secondary winding. All right, so again, the formula remains the same. So therefore, the number of secondary turns is equal to 1,200 multiplied by 24 volt divided by 120 volt. That will give us 28,800 divided by 120, and that will equal to 240 turns on the secondary winding. All right, so that's it for part two, and that's it for this question.